just like pretty much everyone else, I wasn't too bothered about the new Wonka film when it was announced because it felt like yet another nostalgia bait cash grab featuring the current it boy. But when the algorithm pushed this very trustworthy article my way, I was baffled, buffooned, dare I even say bewildered to find out Wonka is actually a musical. A musical? Girl, why did you say so? <laughs> If the film only had one or two musical numbers, I could understand why they weren't included in the trailer, but I went to see it and this was a full-blown musical. Most of the characters are singing, there's multiple dance sequences, like the whole shebang. So why was it never advertised as one? Frankly, it gives a little bit sticking the dog's medicine and ham vibe, like why would you hide the genre of your film? Or were we just expected to know that it's a musical because Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory it was one? Because I, for one, do not remember the songs in that film. The only part I remember from that film is when Charlie and his granddad need to burp to stop levitating because burps are funny. <coughs> By not including such a significant element of a film in the marketing, they're kind of giving off the impression that they're embarrassed that it's a musical. <laughs> Like, I just don't get it. What did they expect to happen? To lure musical theater haters into somehow falling in love with the genre because... Newsflash! Tons of people already are. And they're not watching your film because you didn't advertise it correctly! I need to calm down. I'm, I'm already getting very heated and we haven't even reached the crux of the video yet. <laughs> Sorry for sounding so sniffly, by the way. I don't think it's COVID, but... Maybe. <laughs> The same thing is happening with the new Mean Quack. Girls film. Like, why has Hollywood all of a sudden decided that musicals aren't cool anymore, but then still making them? Musical theater is a billion dollar industry and previous films such as La La Land or The Greatest Showman were met with critical and financial success. Okay, I do have to address the elephant in the room. Certain more recent musical films, I'm thinking of Dear Evan Hansen or Everybody's Talking About Jamie, were in fact far from masterpieces. So I do, I do understand that there are some preconceived notions surrounding the genre at the minute. But the only way of changing that narrative is by making a freaking good musical. And I would argue the best way of doing that is to hire experts on the subject, right? Sounds kind of straightforward, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Neither one of the songwriters have actually ever written a musical. Don't get me wrong, they have really impressive credits, but neither of them have experience actually writing a musical. That's like hiring a sushi chef to make your Quack. wedding cake. Like, sure, they'll get the job done, but none of the guests are coming back for seconds. In all fairness, though, I thought the music was fine. Just like the singing of the main man himself. It was fine. At least it was a step up from Piers Brosnan and Mamma Mia. Or Russell Crowe and Les Mis. <laughs> but it still stings a little, to be honest. Why would you hire someone who most likely worked their butt off to get into drama school to then work their butt off to get an agent to then work their butt off for every single audition despite constant rejection? Someone who over the years has developed such a good skill set and a deep understanding of the genre when you can just hire Timothy Chalamet. But Anne, obviously those hardworking musical theater actors will also be in the film as the background characters. I will never get over the fact that actors who played Marius in Broadway productions were cast as students next to Eddie Redmayne in the Les Mis film adaptation. Was Timothy singing so bad then? No. But was it particularly good? No. At no point did I feel moved by his vocals, which is kind of the whole point of a musical. <laughs> I would argue the whimsical world of Willy Wonka perfectly lends itself to a musical adaptation. But just because something is a straightforward choice does not mean a guaranteed home run. As the 2013 West End production proved, I don't know if it's the lack of experience from the songwriters or if they had to adjust the songs to Timothy's untrained vocals, but the melodies just felt so lackluster. When musical numbers should act as a shortcut to emotion. It's just such a missed opportunity. Like, I can't help but wonder what this film could have been like if the songs were written by Robert Lopez or Tim Minchin. And if it was starring a seasoned pro like Jonathan Groff. Although he might be a bit too old. Because I do think Paul King was definitely on the right track. <laughs> and you're just being too critical. And okay, yes, maybe I am. Maybe I am a hater who is always going to hate, hate, hate. But that is because I love musical theater. I not only have a bachelor in musical theater, I also have a master's degree. Yes, that exists. 
So sorry about being aggressive about the bad hand my industry has been dealt recently. I just feel like businessmen who have no prior knowledge or even love for the art form has suddenly caught wind that you can make some money producing musicals. But their biggest downfall is that they don't seem to understand the complexities of these shows. With ingredients such as music, dancing, acting, you have the potential to create a magical show, but it does take an expert to figure out the right balance for it all to come together. Frankly, it's quite insulting to just assume that anyone who can write music and a dialogue can master the intricacies of making a musical. It usually takes multiple years simply to finalize the script and the score. But time is money, so mediocrity is the way to go, I guess. I feel like the musical theater industry is essentially trapped in this cycle where producers are only choosing projects that involve some sort of familiarity, like uh, an existing character or world from a famous franchise, or even the songs of a pop star, which don't inherently, but usually lack good storytelling because they just completely rely on that familiarity to entertain audiences. But obviously people need more, so they leave the theater feeling dissatisfied. So then when a producer does take a risk with a brand new show, nobody's buying tickets because they've already decided that they do not like musical theater. So producers only focus on projects with familiarities and round and round we go. I guess the Wonka team felt like not marketing the film as a musical was the only way to get people to see it. A little... Trojan horse style, I guess. But by going about it in this way, they subconsciously reinforce the sentiment that musical theater at its core is something cringy. Something you need to trick people to see instead of something actually just worthwhile. It really doesn't sit well with me that this whole musical suck rhetoric is being spread because like any genre, yes, some of it is bad, but a lot of it is good as well. And if you've never seen a musical that you like, then I'm just gonna take a wild guess and say that you've only seen one, probably Mamma Mia, and then you've decided that you hated the whole genre. Am I right or am I right? It wouldn't hurt to gather some more data before making a blanket statement now, wouldn't it? But okay, I guess it's possible that you don't connect with people singing. That's fine. It's a bit weird seeing you probably spend most of your time listening to music, but that's fine. The opening weekend gross numbers for La La Land seem to suggest that enough people still are interested in a story filled with music. I bet if they marketed Wonka as a musical, enough people would still go watch it. Even if it didn't star Timothy Chalamet. And that wouldn't just be musical theatre lovers, Wonka fans as well, despite what that stupid article claims. And maybe you wouldn't yield the highest profit possible, but you also wouldn't damage the reputation of a genre that you clearly see as a gimmick rather than an art form. I'm desperately trying to wrap up this video because I'm rapidly losing daylight. Yay, winter in England. <laughs> so yeah, let's just call a spade a spade. Like, I know I'm not saying anything new here. Capitalism has ruined yet another way for us to fulfill a basic human need. The need for expression and for connection. I can't wait for communism.